Welcome to WeekdayChurch.com. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about those sort of short-term followers, people without a root in them. Uh, we're going to look at this from a spiritual point of view, but how many of you have sort of dealt with this in lots of areas of life, where you sat there and said, I really got to go lose some weight, and three, four days in, you notice you're eating a bowl of ice cream, and within a week you're sort of off, or I got to go to the gym, I'm going to do that, and five or six days of going to the gym, or a couple weeks in at best, you're sort of like, oh, I'm hardly going at all anymore, and you notice that there's just no, something in you that doesn't really want to go do that. Well, what makes us that way? What makes us sort of want to struggle through these things where we really want to go and we're excited for a while, but then it just sort of fizzles? And what do we do about that? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in our worship time today. Will you join me as we open in prayer? Heavenly Father, we love you and we adore you. And we are so glad that you are constant. You aren't like us. You aren't here today and gone tomorrow. You aren't all excited about something for a little bit and then you give up on it. God, you are stable. You are forever. You are unchanging. You are God yesterday, today, and forever. And we love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture passage today is Mark chapter 4, verses 13 through 20. You can read along with me. The word of God says, and he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. And these are the ones along the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. The ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then, with tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown among thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. But those that were sown on the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. The people that we're talking about today are the ones that fall among the rocks. The sower goes out and again, he's just casting seed wherever he goes. He's just throwing it here and there and he's not planting them, trying to get some flowers or something to come up. He's just putting the seed everywhere and whatever comes up is great. And it falls on all kinds of different ground. Well, one of them falls among the rocks. And it's uh, nice, and it's hot in there, and maybe there's been some rain, and so there's some water. And really quickly, it's the first one to sprout up, and it's a, you're like, well, that's great. But it never really develops a root. So it's just there, in the rocks, shooting up real fast, but it's not going to last. I have met all kinds of people like this. You talk to them about the Lord. And boy, at first, they're so excited. They're like, yeah, this is exactly it. I'm in love with Jesus. This is really what I need. And, and, and often, they're so excited, and they will even pray the prayer. You know the one I mean. Heavenly Father, I need Jesus to save me. I need him to come in and forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and make me a Christian. And, for, and, and boy, I'm so excited about everything that Jesus has done with me. And they'll come into church and they'll testify and they'll get baptized and they're so excited. And for a while you think, wow, this is going to be super Christian. The next apostle's just been born. I mean, they're going to start changing the world for Jesus. And then a few months go, and you don't see him anymore. And then you go talk to them, and maybe they're, you know, oh, okay, and then they'll come back for a week. But again, then they're gone again. And then after a while, you just notice they're not there. And you think, well, maybe they got upset. Maybe they're going somewhere else to church. You know, so you go visit them and you ask. No, 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 I mean, I'm still really walking with the Lord, and I'm real excited, but you could just sort of tell it's all gone. And all that excitement that was there and all that love for God that seemed to be there at the beginning is gone. And it never really comes back. And, and then they're really hard to talk to because uh, they've been there and they've done that. And if you were ever asked them about where they stand with the Lord, they'll tell you about how they invited Jesus into their heart and they've been baptized and, and they love the Lord. But, but, you know, they're not going to church anywhere. And as a pastor, this is something I know. 
when we aren't doing the public things for God, no matter how much someone tries to convince me, they're not doing the private things for God either. If the public things that not only God sees, but everyone else sees, and we all want people to think well of us, and we all want to impress other people, and if even that doesn't motivate us to do the things of God in private, we're not really praying, meditating, learning the Word of God, listening to the sermons that we should, and giving our financial back to the Lord. We're not doing these things because we're not doing them publicly and we're not doing them privately. And no matter how much they're trying to convince you that, oh, they're right where they were, all that early excitement didn't really have any depth to it, any root. And you say, well, what happened? These are bandwagon people. As long as times were good, they were all excited. When they first came to the faith and they thought heaven was in their future and they didn't need to get on board and get saved and get Jesus in their life, they were all for it. You'll find sports fans like this. If a team is doing good, they're a hardcore fan. They're in love with that team. But if that team starts stinking, they're done with them. My daughter's like this. If the team is good, she's their biggest fan. If they aren't doing good at all, she's finding a new team, baby. She's in love with that team because, hey, these people are losers. Who wants to be stuck with them? And you'll see that that can happen in the religious world, too. That when times are good as a Christian, people will be there and they're following the Lord. But the first sign of trouble, trials, persecution, they're gone. And they aren't going to have anything to do with the Lord anymore. I'm going to tell you something. I want to make this very clear because the passage makes it very clear. This person isn't a Christian. This isn't a believer. You can say, well, how could you know that? They have no root. The root is Jesus Christ. The Bible says this. He is the vine. We are the branches. If we remain in him and he remains in us, we will bear fruit. But if we aren't of him, if we don't remain of him, it says that we are cast off and thrown into everlasting fire. Well, that's hell. And it's not that you were saved and then lost and then you get saved again and lost again and saved again. It's not that. It's that you never had the root in you to begin with. It just looked good from the outside. It seemed exciting. You may have even believed it yourself. And you prayed that prayer, but there was no fruit bearing repentance there was no real change because at the first sign of trouble at the first sign of other things you left you say well what do you do about somebody like that well first you need to pray that they will receive Jesus warts and all the hard times and the happy times that they will say I will be there with Jesus I've made my stand with him. When the hard times came, so many of Jesus' followers walked out, and he looked at the twelve, and he said this, Are you going to leave me too? And they had the root in them. And they looked back at him, and they said, Where else are we going to go? You alone hold the words of life. Jesus is the author of life. And once you're tied in with him, you're not going to go anywhere. But if it's just a temporary excitement, you'll go. So you need to pray for these people. That they will accept Jesus. Not just pray a prayer, but that they will pray a prayer that leads them to true repentance and falling in love with Jesus. You need to pray that they will have the root of Christ in their lives that produces the fruit of the Holy Spirit and of a changed life. That's what you need to do for these people. Now, some of them may be your friends, your family members. And it is really hard, but the Bible says this, the truth will set you free. It is a really hard truth to accept that many of these people, when years ago, they prayed the prayer of salvation, they got baptized, they were all excited for Christ, they loved their youth group, they were great in their children's group, they were really excited about church, they were in the band, they were in the choir, they taught a class, but for years now, They've not walked with the Lord. This person doesn't know God. This isn't a 16-year backsliding. This is there was no root. So you need 
to understand what you're doing when you talk to this person. That their need isn't just to come back to God. That their need is to get saved and to be born again. Or will you join me as I pray for our closing breath? blessing? Heavenly Father, let us not be a people who have no root. Let us bear fruit for you. God, I know the many who are watching this, but that's where they are. They're the good ground. The fruit's being born in their life. They love you. They're growing in you. But God, they have family members and friends who this is exactly where they are. Heavenly Father, I pray this blessing. May those people develop a root. May they come to you in salvation. And may we who love them not lie to them or to ourselves by saying how saved they are and that it's, well, you know, I know because I saw you come to Jesus. No, no, no. It was a short excitement that did not last, did not persevere, and they do not really know you. God, let us know that when we pray, we need to be praying for their soul. We need to be praying for their spirit. We need to be praying for their salvation. Let us be faithful in doing so. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing song today is, I bowed on my knees and cried holy. Well, that's exactly what we need to do. Those of us that know the Lord is just to say, God, it's not that we were so worthy, but you are worthy and you are holy and we love you. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Hope you have a great day. I'll see you again tomorrow. I dream of a city called Glory. And it was so bright and so fair. And when I entered the gates, I cried, Holy, Holy, Holy. All the angels, they met me there. And then they came. To mention in all the I saw. That's when I said that I want to.